Here we are, Monday morning for me, uh, Mastermind Mondays, where we come on a Monday as coaches to go ahead and get the tools, the training, and the skills that we need to ensure that we're driving massive value to our facilities, getting results for our players, and in doing so, driving up our businesses. Today, I want to talk about four steps to close more sales. You all know that I have a real passion for what many of us call selling. I love to just call communication, building rapport, and getting connected with someone to a point that they trust you. For me, I see this to be the biggest stumbling block for most professionals, and it's twofold. One is because they're not competent or comfortable with how to sell, what it leads to is them not being able to actually help their students. And what I mean by that is, is that you have outstanding skills. You have outstanding ability to help somebody achieve their goals. But if they can't see that value, if they can't trust you enough and see that you have the solution, they're not going to sign up. And to me, that's a total injustice because what it means is that person doesn't get better at golf. And that person doesn't get to love golf the way that you love this game. We all got into this game because we love it and we love teaching it. And it's a sport that, as we all know, a lot like life is very difficult. It's a sport that's just, it's, it's a struggle, but also has highs and lows. And it's where you need a good coach to help you along that process. So if we don't master the skills needed in sales, guess what? Those students aren't going to get the goals that they desire. And then on top of that, what's going to happen is this. You are not going to make the money that you deserve as a professional. It's one of the things I run into all the time, and I just challenge each of you to think about it. We say that we make $100 an hour or we charge $100 an hour. So I'll usually say to a pro, well, that would mean that you're grossing $160,000 a year. Inevitably, they look at me with a blank face and don't realize that 2,000 work hours times what they're charging would, would equal that money. So I say, okay, well, let's say you're coaching 75% of the time. Well, then you should be making 120. Inevitably, they turn to me and say, I'm making about 35. So really, you're at $17 an hour. And for me as a professional, I am going to help you today to understand how you drive your value up. Because no professional gets paid $17 an hour. A professional is somebody, an expert, who can truly help somebody to achieve an outcome that they desire. And today, I want to break down in four very simple steps that if you apply these steps, it'll help you close more sales and help you get more results for your players because you're going to have more students standing in front of you. So today, we're going to start off, as always, with a little question. And you've all got to get open and honest with me here. So I'm going to open up the chat box. I'm going to put my little uh, hi in here and type that in. And so here's the question for today, okay? And please answer honestly. And if you want to throw in additional comments, I love those too. So what prevents you from being paid what you're worth? What prevents you from being paid what you're worth? So I've got a couple options for you here. And you're allowed to have multiples. If you say all of those and more, then go ahead and put it in there, okay? So students don't see my value. Uh, Steve Schaff, well done, asking for the price, okay? Uh, keep them coming in. Next one is, I'm reluctant to raise my prices. So that sort of anxiety or fear of knowing, am I really worth this, will people pay? Next one will be, I don't control the pricing at my facility. So this is almost, it's out of my hands. Next one, I don't have the right technology or certification to justify increasing my price or getting paid what I deserve. You know, sometimes there'll be a guy down the road who's got this technology and there's a gal down the road who's got all these certifications and I don't have them, so how can I possibly be at that price? So here we go, affluent enough client base. That's a great one, Wayne, well done. Yeah, like the people in my area, it's just not, that the money's not there. Uh, Paul Hober, uh, A and a little of D. Yeah, great. Chad, we don't truly believe we're providing value. We don't know our story yet or our why. I love it. Donovan, students always learn but don't always improve. That's a fantastic one right there, right? So 
My students are learning from me, but they're not all getting better. So how do I increase my price if their demand, if I don't have demand that I'm getting results? So yeah, absolutely. Exactly what we are, we're worth, okay? And then other. So just go ahead and just take a minute here to fill this out because this is gonna get you in the right mindset to at least address that maybe we're not making the money that we deserve. And now some of you might be saying, well, I am get, making quite a bit of money, but are you also working a whole lot more than you think you should? Sending emails at the end of the night, adding in extra email, uh, you know, videos. And so that one hour lesson is really now an hour and a half because you didn't finish on time and you had a bunch of work afterwards. So again, not making uh, quick fix students, um, <clears throat> haven't yet differentiated from those using the standard technique model. Okay, fantastic. All right, so what I wanna do now is go ahead and dive into these four steps. And hopefully you're gonna see like, well, I've heard you say that before, but today I'm picking up on it in a different way. I'm realizing what I might have to actually start to do to make this change. So the first thing that we're gonna look at here is the concept of find out before you fix. Now, another way to put this is ask a bunch of questions. You know, I've talked about this before with you. Selling is not telling, all right? Brian Tracy said that, right? He's a very famous sales, sales guru. It's this idea of listening and understanding and really unpacking what a person has going for them and what they're struggling with. One of the key things that we, we get stuck on here is we're so quick to see the ball slicing and know that we can fix that. We can fix that slice. But the problem with that is, is that you don't get paid a lot of money to fix a slice. You know, fixing a slice, they could go onto YouTube. They could go and buy a book. They could go ahead and ask a friend who's a better golfer. Because if we're just focusing on that initial fix, we're on that top layer and that top level. And I'm just looking back to who said this. I think it was, uh, let me just come back. There's a bunch of answers. Way to go. Um, Wayne, you said affluent area client base. Like, if you're in, a, in an area where <clears throat> there's not a whole ton of money or there's a retirement community and it's like, well, I'm on a fixed income and you're going to fix a slice, it's only worth $50, maybe $100. But if you dive deeper in your questioning and you start to understand that, well, that they've, they're shooting a lot higher scores and it's causing them embarrassment and frustrating and, you know, they're, they're really thinking of, you know, maybe even stopping golf. This same person will go and spend $800 on a new driver because somebody sold them on the belief that this shaft and this head is gonna help you get that extra distance. So what I challenge you to do here is start to get more comfortable listening more and having questions prepared. So the first challenge I want you to have today is always ask you to have a pen or your iPad or, or whatever it is you take notes with, okay? is I want you to go ahead and script out your three power questions. We must make sure that we know what are the questions that we're gonna ask that are gonna dive deeper to get those results. Rather than you know, just, hey, what are you struggling with today? We've gotta to go deeper than that. And I want each one of you to start to, and if, if, you, if you're interested, go ahead and start jumping them into, dropping them in here into the, um, into the chat is, what are those questions that really unpack problems for people? A lot of times it's pain and other times it's about pleasure. It's about the goals they're looking for. And I would want you to have at least one pain question. Realistically, my suggestion would be two and one pleasure question in terms of where's the biggest struggle? Tell me how that's affecting your game, you know, and let them unpack that and what's the consequences of that? What's, what's that making you feel like? How, how are you struggling with that? And then what's your desired outcome? What would make you over the moon? What would really transform the way that you're thinking and playing about the game of golf? What could I do for you? We've got to make sure that we have those questions scripted and ready for the different type of players that we have. Those questions would be very different if I was talking to a parent of a high schooler who's looking to try and go play, play college golf. They would be a lot clearer along the lines of things like, do you have a plan on how you're going to connect with coaches? You know, a lot of parents don't even know that's a responsibility that they have to take on. How are you going to define the right school and the right coach for your son or your daughter? 
You see, these questions will start conversations which will help you to start to unpack what the real problems are and then help you with those solutions. The second step I want to get into is also going to go ahead and look back onto this first step. And this is plan your proposal. A lot of us are so quick to go ahead and just see the problem and fix it. We're just going to fix that slice and because almost pridefully, we want to help that person so much that we're going to fix them rather than listen more. We're going to start jumping to how we're going to a conclusions, but also solutions rather than really starting to think about what is it they actually need? What is the plan of action they need to take? And when we do this, it's going to help us to drive up our value. And I'm going to give you a specific scenario here on what that feels like to have that put together. So when I went and saw a financial planner with my wife, I remember sitting down and we went through a series of questions with this planner. His name was Scott. And he asked questions like, you know, when would you like to retire? What does retirement look like for you? What, what, what's your retirement program look like right now? What have you got as far as investments? I mean, these are very personal questions, right? That, you know, I'm not gonna share with everybody, but because I'm in front of an expert, I'm willing to unpack those. What do I wanna do as far as my kids' college funds? Do I have college funds? Do you think your kids are gonna go to college? Are they more hands-on and they might wanna go to, you know, outside of schooling? As we went through this process, he really unpacked everything about our budget. He unpacked all these truths, right? Which again, got me to really start to look at where I was financially. Now, if he'd have said to me then, great, fantastic. I can help you, let's start it. Here's the contract. I'd have been really scared. In fact, I would have definitely backed myself out of that room and said, there's no way I'm gonna go with this guy if he thinks he can solve my problems that quickly. Now, on the other side of that, he might be that much of an expert, as may you, that you can solve their problems. You know exactly what's wrong with them. You know exactly what's happening. You know what you need to do. And you've done it so many times that he's going to get me to retire financially in a great place, and you're going to get them to break 80. But there's a difference between what you know and what you've experienced and what they don't know yet. And so when Scott said to me, well, this is great, <clears throat> Amanda, thanks for the information. What I'd like to do is go away and put a plan together. But I am going to need you to go ahead and send me some more information. I'll have a few more questions and I'll also send you a review of what we've discussed. And if you're okay with that, then we'll meet again and I will lay out a plan to help you to understand how my services can get you to your desired goals. And at that point, we can work together. And I thought, this is fantastic. Sounds great, Scott. Let's do this. As I walked out the door, I thought to myself, this is exactly what golf professionals need to start to embrace and accept, that experts take time to book together a proposal. If I'm just fixing a slice, of course I can say, yes, it's $100 for now. Let's get to work. Let's fix it. But you're going to get paid as an expert when you start to show them a plan much bigger than just fixing a slice. So what I wanna challenge you to do is take the time to structure and tailor these plans for your players. The key step to this is building out your proposal template. Put together a template of with your logo on it, with their name and date, and go through, this is what I heard. This is what you're desiring. <clears throat> this is what I believe that you need to accomplish that goal so that they can have time to process that you actually know the steps that they have to go on. Because as I said, it's easy to fix a slice, but it's not easy to get to that to happen on a Saturday morning in the men's club event. That takes getting on the golf course, working on your mental approach, having a better routine, getting your driver fit correctly for you, understanding course management, and what we want to be able to do is when we put together a proposal is not just come back with a quick answer because it devalues us as a coach because we say, oh, it's 100 bucks, it's three lessons and it's $300. Oh, and I'll do it for 280. What we want to do is be willing to walk away and say, let me think about it and let me come back to you. If you think about this with that college player I was talking about earlier, you definitely have to go away and have a whole bunch more information and propose what it would take to get them a college scholarship than say somebody who's just starting golf and just wants to get into golf. 
So there are different levels that you're going to build out on this proposal, but I want to challenge you to stop answering right away with the solution and spend more time asking questions and even assessing and getting more so-called homework that Scott set me to work on the problems that I have and understand them more in depth so that the plan that you propose is even more specific because when they see it and actually believe it, when Scott puts it in front of me and I actually go, wow, that makes sense for my college plan. That's meant sense for my retirement. I could retire this time with this much money. I'm in. Now, it's the same thing he might have already known the minute he talked to me because it's his profession. He's an expert. But he has to help me cross the bridge and gain confidence in me understanding what has to happen for me to be financially free or for me to be able to hit a straight golf ball off of the first tee box. So as we start to build out your proposal template, the next step is to then provide your expert opinion. Many of you have heard me talk about this many times and I, and I drum it in over and over again because this again is where you see real value. When I look at a coach, let's just say someone like Dustin Johnson, you know, who works with Butch. And if he goes there and says, Butch, I need to hit it further because that's what Bryson is doing. You know, I really think that Butch is going to say, I've won enough majors with enough tour players that what you actually need is this, this, and this, and you need to trust me. And this is where I challenge you to really start to think that if you don't have a plan built out, how are you giving an ex expert opinion? What you're really just doing is selling a product. You're just selling, Scott could easily have just sold me one piece of life insurance. Oh, here's his bonus of whatever. What if he manages my money for the next 25 years? There's a much bigger price tag on that and, and obviously success for him. So what we've got to start to look at here is I find that most golf pros through fear think about, well, he lives on the other side of the tracks and I don't know if he has that much money and I'm going to go ahead. I think he'll probably, I think he'll probably do a five pack. So I'll, I'll offer him a five pack because that's doable rather than what do they actually need? You know where they're at. They've told you where they want to get to. Now it's your responsibility to be willing to at least lay that plan out for them. And one of the places where people struggle with this is, is that they're so focused on selling their package or their product that they don't even have a process to go through. So the third step I want you to work on this week is this concept of actually listing out the tools that you have. And most importantly, what are the benefits to those tools? So you could start to look at this concept of, well, yeah, this person is struggling and my technology helps this way. I can yardage gap. I can do a drive from optimization. I can fit them for a driver. I can do a wedge combine. Like that's some tool, that's my one tool and all the benefits it offers. And then I've got on-course coaching and I've got short game coaching sessions and I've got a putting clinic and I've got a putter fitting. We need to make sure you have all of your tools listed out and continue to expand that list over time so that when you put the pieces together, you're actually giving your student what they need. So you might decide, <clears throat> I need a sit down parent meeting with the student where for an hour we go over how to get into college, you know, and get a college scholarship. I don't have that product yet. Well, if you want to be an expert and you know that information, you would now need to create a line item, right? You know, like a, like a product that says this is a one hour training. If you need to start doing driver optimization sessions, you need to start that adding that to your toolkit so that you can piece all of these tools together so this is the proposal that you're offering them. So they're actually seeing, for example, for Scott with me, Will, here's what we're going to do with you, with suggestions for your college plan. Here are your suggestions for you know, your retirement. This is what I think we should do with insurance. This is what I think we should do with your budget. This is what, and you start to see the whole, the whole picture and you go, I can see how this is going to work. And so I would, tr I would really make sure that each of you are getting this down on paper and then aligning this with the student you're in front of. Because you probably don't need driver optimization for a student who's never touched a golf club before. But you definitely need it for a college player. 
And the more time you spend going through these three steps so far, and I'll give you the fourth here shortly, of understanding the questions to ask, building out a template for that type of student, and in that template, having all the tools that, and the benefits to those tools, now you can provide your expert opinion to them on, yes, we can fix the, fix the slice. And that's, that's not hard to do. But I then want to teach you how to do it under pressure, which is why you'd like you in a group coaching session, because there'll be other people. And it's, you're going to be nervous, but let's see if it works. And then if we see it working on the range with other people, what I'd love to do is just the two of us one-on-one -on -one go on the golf course. And let's just play three holes, see if, see if you can do it on the course. And then once I see you can do it on the course, what I'd love to do is I would then, the next step is get in a group and have me coach with you and see if we can do it under pressure. And then from there, if you can do that, you'd be able to do it on a Saturday morning. So I just offered them four different tools that I have to help them believe that they can take their slice from a slice to a straight, from straight to with people, from straight to with people on the golf course to doing it on a Saturday. I'm solving their problem. So as we come to this, you've now got the big picture. And this is, I would say, probably the biggest and most important part is you also have to now be willing to go ahead and make it a simple start. If I went in and Scott was talking to me and said, look, you need to change all of your money from here, all of your money from there, move it to here. And even if it's exactly what, and I can see the numbers, I still haven't built up enough trust with this person to go ahead and change my entire financial plan in one go. So what, what the offer was is like, well, how about a real simple thing we do is let's just get these college plans from here to here because you can see the benefits. Yeah, that sounds great. And then I think once we've done that, the next step should be this. And, and I think what it should be is let's start up this type of retirement fund or 401k or whatever it may be, these tools that they have. And when they then present the benefits of it, and I say, well, my risk tolerance isn't that high. Oh, okay, well, let's come back and do this then. Give me options on how I want to move forward so the trust can be built to a point that I'm jumping all in and going like, yeah, let's, let's go quicker. I believe you now. So what I want to make sure you have as you go through this process is a simple start point. Yes, we've gone ahead and we've built out this whole step-by-step -step plan and we've showed them the value. But how can you get them to start to see the results, start to gain trust in you and gain momentum? It's one of the most important parts to building a strong coaching relationship is making sure that you're getting results as you go and not just selling them on the idea. You know, so many of us have heard, well, you know, we're going to take this lesson and you're going to take two steps back before you take one step forward. I think that's a terrible way to teach. I think that's a terrible way to coach. Because you're now losing confidence. You came to me with little confidence and hope. And now I'm going to get you to be change your grip and be worse. How about I just go ahead and hit, get you have less putts so you shoot lower scores so you have more confidence in me so I can go to the golf course with you and then we can address this big slice that you have. So I would, what I want you to do here in this fourth step is very simple, but it's something that most people actually don't put together because their entry point is a one-hour lesson. What is the entry point that you want to have and the entry offer for this type of player? Is it a short, short game combine on TrackMan? Is it a on-course coaching session? Is it a TPI, you know, if, if their body's hurting, is it a TPI screening? Is it, give them something that in, you know, three or four sessions, they can start to see improvement, that they can start to gain confidence. So then, they can see phase one of the plan has been done. I'm bought into that next level. So you start to pick out the most important thing that would give them impact results in their scores, in their desire to hit the ball further, whatever it may be. I want you to go ahead and offer it to them at a level where even if they say, yeah, I'm all in, let's just sign up right away. Go, great. The first thing we're going to do is this. One of the things about an expert advisor you have to remember is, is that it's a two-way street. If this, if this person is basically, for example, with Scott, if I, every time I spoke to him, if I was short with him, I didn't give him answers, after a while, he'd want to fire me. <laughs> and I want you to take it the same way, that you've got an amazing gift to offer, and you're going to give them your expert advice. But if they're not doing the homework and they've signed up for a six-month program, you've got six months of frustration in front of you. Rather than, listen, in the next four weeks, this is what we're going to do. 
do you, do you get what I'm doing? Do you see how this builds into your plan? Yes, I do. So this is the whole concept that I want you to go through. Just what I took from going and seeing that financial planner and having that journey of being you know, on track to be financially in a stable place when I retire and my kids having great college and being able to just be stress-free about money. I want you to do the same for your students. So as we just review these four steps, let's just look back through these. I just move this around. Find out before you fix. Plan the proposal, which means it takes time. Go away and plan it before you just offer them a solution, okay? Give them your expert opinion, not what you think they can afford to buy. This is the roadmap to where you told me you would like to go. And then finally, give them a simple way to start that will drive results for them, which will gain trust, and then they'll be willing to move on to that next step. So again, today there are four challenges for you to start to work on. I hope each and every one of you can start to apply this. Remember, if you're on this call, it's the first step to excellence, right? It's the first step, okay? The second step and the hardest one is to actually take what I've told you and do it, and do it with students. That's action and implementation. That's what we have to be willing to do. So for those of you that are gonna go out there this week, I want you to just be pushed and go and be motivated to do this. For those of you who are saying, look, I don't have a coach right now. I don't have a mentor. I've heard about RGX, I've been on these calls. And you know what? Maybe it's time that I explore you know, what it is to actually follow a path, follow, you know, follow a coach and a mentor in a community on a track. And if you're interested in that, then let's get on a phone call. This is the link below, RGX Coach slash explore. I'll drop it in here, hopefully. And let's get on a call and just explore a little bit more about what you're doing, what you've got going on, what's working and what's not. And then from there, help you on this journey to achieving your goals. So with that said, I see one question being fired in from Todd. What were the three different types of power questions again? Also, do you have a sample template of a proposal? Todd, absolutely, you're in the team, you know, you're an RGX coach, so that's exactly what you're going to be getting here at 12 o'clock this afternoon. We're going to be working on that. So, um, uh, and, and yes, the proposal templates, uh, Paul, I saw, saw that one as well. Those are exactly the sorts of things that we'll go through with you that we'll show you in the scoring method and things like that, the, the, the templates of how to do that. But here's my challenge for every one of you is, I want you to write down your own and start to unpack it so that you can then work off of a template and see where yours is working, where is it not? So everybody, make it an amazing week. For many of you, I'll be seeing you on call throughout the day and throughout this week and have an amazing first week of March, correct? Yes, it is. Thanks, everyone. See ya.